Hey everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, now that we have taken care of getting a GPS system up and running, I want to get started on actual operations on the MUN. Now the first step to do that is going to be to build a space station. And that means I need some sort of vessel to transport stuff and back, back and forth. Um, I've actually taken the time to design basically a modified version of the tug that I have. Um, instead of so much RCS fuel, it has a lot more rocket fuel and oxidizer. And it's got four engines instead of two. So I'm hoping that's going to give it a little bit more uh, tugging power. I am also quite hopeful that this will be enough to get it in orbit. It doesn't weigh really any more than the other tug. It weighs a little bit more, but it's about the same. I'm trying out that skipper engine as the uh, the middle stage for orbital maneuvers and stuff. See how that goes. And, uh, well, I guess there's nothing to do really but try to launch this thing and see what happens. So we're going to go for a low orbit with this. Probably, let's close some of this stuff. Let's say like a hundred, maybe like 120? kilometers let's just go for the lowest possible orbit so it'll be easy to get components up let's go for like 75 so we're just out of the atmosphere yeah that makes sense to me uh everything else here looks good i want it to stop at stage two if it gets to that point which i don't think it will let's engage the autopilot and let's make sure we're controlling from the right place all righty Fingers crossed. It looks like a decent takeoff. It's not that wobbly, really, or anything. I'm feeling okay about this. And there's the engine throttling down a little bit to save fuel. Yeah, this looks like it's going to work out just fine. So, basically, what I'm going to end up doing, um, I'll explain while we're on the way up, I guess, is I'm going to basically partially what the heck just flew off that um, I'm going to partially assemble this thing in orbit of Kerbin I'll probably do it in like three or four chunks I have the whole space station built in the vehicle assembly building I'm just gonna chop it into pieces and transport it that way um, I don't know how much I can realistically pull with this thing yet so I'm gonna be doing kind of lightweight components to start and then we'll gradually work it up to bigger and bigger things um, I'm actually considering building a new fuel depot that's separate from my space station that's in orbit of Kerbin um, because I'd, I'd like to not have so much stuff on that one station and then these ships wouldn't have to come back to that too which would be beneficial I think for frame rate. I like the new uh, little coast detail there, that's pretty nifty. There's like a little continental shelf or whatever now. All right, Fuel looks like it's kind of doing okay. Let's uh try to rotate this thing just a hair if we could. That way when the other tanks fall off, gravity will be on our side with that. Yeah, that ought to work. Yeah, this thing I think is gonna get space space bound here in a second. What are we doing? Oh yeah, we'll make it easily in the orbit with this. We might even still have these tanks, the big tanks, left. That's good to know. I'll have to check to see what this weighs exactly and kind of keep track of what I can successfully get in the 75 kilometer orbit here. That is awfully wobbly and a little worrying. Oh, please don't. Okay, it's fine. Never mind. All is well. That was a little bit scary though, but it, it didn't matter. Let's turn on the lights. Oh yeah. I like to build my ships with these like warp nacelle looking things just because I like Star Trek. I know there's no warp nacelles in this game as of yet. I think there's some mods that add stuff like that, but I don't like those kind of mods. If they ever get added to the game, I mean, I guess they'll have to if, uh, there's ever going to be interstellar travel because you really can't do it with just these kind of rockets. It would take billions of years. Not billions, but 
hundreds of years. So we'll have to see what they decide to do with that. I'm kind of losing a little bit of confidence that this thing's going to make it. I guess we're getting there. It is a little bit on the worrying side, though. I guess we got, like, tons of fuel. This thing's pretty fuel efficient, this new engine. It's a lot better than the mainsail. It's not that much less thrust. It's, like, 400 or something, which, once we get out of the atmosphere, is not really that important. I might keep using this design with the new skipper engine thing, because I, I think I like it. Things are getting awfully crowded here with all these GPS satellites and communication satellites and what have you. At least they let you sort stuff now. You can do that just right here, which is pretty neat. It's going to make life easier, but I don't really need to do that right now. Right, so are we leveling off? Oh my god, that is a slow climb. getting more and more worrying. I'd rather not have to use the main engines on this thing because if I have to use the those Nerva engines that means I'm gonna have to send up more fuel and that adds another mission. Not encouraging. Come on man. Very un unhappy times here. Okay. Picking up a little more speed now. That's going a little bit faster. What orbit is that satellite that I put up? That the very first satellite? That's in uh, 80,000. Okay, it'll be just above us. That's fine. I just want to make sure we're not on too similar of an orbit. MechJeb kind of pulses the engines in a funny way now that it didn't used to. Now, is it going to be able to plot this maneuver and hit it. I'd rather it not use RCS if I could get away with it. Can it do it? I don't think this thing's going to have enough fuel to deorbit itself, if it even makes orbit. I have to think about how heavy my components are. I do not believe that burn time, but maybe it's... No, uh, it kind of was true. Huh. I didn't think there was a chance in heck it would do that. Huh. What do you know? Oh, let's check how things came out here. Yeah, that came out fine. Doesn't take much once you get up to this point, I guess. So we really don't need the rest of this junk anymore. I can probably just ditch that. Let's turn on the SAS, get this thing to stop rolling so much. All right, so first stage is done. Let's go ahead and just thinking if I didn't use any fuel, right? Nope. Nice. So you guys are just going to have to sit here and wait for a little bit, I guess. Sorry about that. Let's try... What, where do I want to point this thing? Because we're going to be docking stuff to it, i got to think. Let's do just up. Oh god, calm down. There we go, there we go. There, nice. So that'll work well enough. Now let's switch back to this guy. And ever so carefully deorbit it. Oh my god, can it even rotate? Holy crap. That thing has got like no torque. I have no uh, RCS on this either. Probably should have put a little itty bitty tank or something because this is going to take a minute. It's going to take just about a minute here. Alright, it's kind of starting to go now. I'm going to aim my rocket so it doesn't blast the side of that thing. 
Like I can see it gimbling a little bit there. Come on. How much fuel does this thing have? That should be more than enough to deorbit it. This tank's mostly full. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Trying to keep my space junk down to a minimum, at least around Kerbin. Once we start getting further out and doing missions to other planets and stuff, it's going to be kind of inevitable that I'm going to have to decouple stuff and leave it on crazy orbits, but that's all right. All right, this doesn't really need to be perfect. Let's call that good and start giving her a little thrust here. Power man. Alright, it's toast. You are done for, my friend. Alright, so let's get back to the space center now. We can just let that do its thing. And take a look at what we got next. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my next segment of the station. And uh I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so this is what we got. I'm gonna use the same launcher again, even though probably overkill I would assume for what we're actually launching and uh, you know we'll hope for the best with this I had to I couldn't really I was trying to figure out a way to get extra parts on this and there wasn't really a way to do it that would uh, let the design function correctly so we're just gonna let it be like this um, I do want to deal with one thing here which is we're gonna end this flight because I don't want him going I'm gonna leave this thing unmanned for the time being, we'll send a crew up later. That, that was weird. The music kind of crapped out there, but it's all right. Alrighty, so let's control from here. And... And this one, we need to do a kind of higher orbit to do a phasing orbit. So... What would be a good phasing orbit? I really don't know. We're just gonna do 125 kilometer orbit. That ought to work out. And then we get a rendezvous from there. So stop again at stage one. And we're good to go. This thing's definitely a little bit faster because it doesn't have a lot of weight on the top. I could have definitely done a lighter rocket, a smaller rocket, but probably just going to be using the same machine here to do all of it. That way it gives me a little bit more. I did not put RCS on it. Uh-oh. Well, this one doesn't really need the RCS that much because the docking is going to be handled on this um, by the the other ship, but i got to remember to put some RCS on it next time because that's not going to be good. That is not going to be good if we don't have RCS. Is definitely going to be a change that needs to be made. Well, actually, that fuel worked out just perfectly. Those separated just as we were reaching um, this point here, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. Look at those things tumble, though. That's pretty funny. All right, well, MechJeb has done an admirable job, even without having uh, Without having any RCS available, MechJeb has still gotten it done. Look how shaky things are. That's really weird. Oh well. It worked out. Definitely for the next mission uh, that comes up here, I'm going to put some RCS on because we need it. I might even rearrange this so that this uh, the stages are a little bit different. So there's just a, an orbital engine like this section here. Um, that's probably something I'm going to do. Whoa. <laughs> Um, just because I think it will make things a little bit simpler uh, for actually getting these rendezvous done. Uh, I don't need a ton of fuel. I'm going to kind of see how much fuel is actually required by the time we're done. Uh, it looks like it might be like a thousand or thereabouts, and then we have to be able to deorbit it too. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it kind of working the way it is. Just put some RCS on this thing so that it's actually controllable in a meaningful fashion. So pretty much what we're going to do here, once this thing gets its intercept completed, I think this is going to just immediately decouple. We're going to dock this thing up with this and get that taken care of. So are we still closing in? We still are. Let's cut this craziness down. 
decouple this and holy moly this might be hard to get everything I want to get done let's go back to orbital thingy here pull up man pull up holy crap come on you got this it's not even moving I just want to not hit the component we just dropped off is the main thing. I actually really don't even particularly care about deorbiting this thing right now. I just want to get it so it's not in our way. Is that going to clear? That is going to clear. And yeah, we can deorbit that later. Now let's switch back over to this. Set our target. Let's do a little time warp jitter just to make sure that that stops. And we don't need rendezvous. We need docking autopilot. Control from here. Turn off the SAS. Turn on the RCS. All right, Mac Jeb, you got this, right? I'm just going to let this in. I do not even feel like dealing with this. Turn on the lights, though. Make it a little prettier. So we're going to go ahead and pick this module up. Um, just going to leave it docked together so they don't drift apart. If you don't dock things together, no matter how close of an orbital match you, you try to get, it seems like things always end up drifting, drifting apart a little bit just because it's never perfect. Their masses are different. Different things affect them different and so forth. So the best course of action is just to make sure that you get everything locked together nice and good. I'm not going to worry about my orientation in terms of using the docking camera to make sure this is up and down the right way because it really doesn't matter right now. Come on, man. I've been messing around with that uh, RCS balancer. It seems to kind of work. Let's turn it on and see what happens here. See, that's working, I guess. Seems like you're kind of missing, Mech Jeb. All right, we're closing in. I did realize that I want the engines to be uh, kind of clearing the two side docking ports because I'm going to try to bring up the solar panels on the next launch and actually bring the whole unit over like that as one thing. So that means the engines need to be clearing those docking ports so that that will actually be possible. So do a little bit of rotating here. And as you can see, this is using the fuse tech or whatever. Uh, common berthing method mechanism things which I like I'm pretty fond of uh, with the romfarer plugin installed uh, it loads I forgot what the range I have it set to it's a pretty long range like 2500 like it's ridiculous how far it loads things away from so when I'm in orbit uh, models are loading stuff like we can still see that pretty dang well there but um, it'll be other stuff too. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have this in a lower orbit too, so it's not near the space station, so the frame rate stays fairly decent. I have never docked these two different docking ports together. This is the new docking point port senior thing that's like a standard Kerbal part now, and this is a mod part. They should work together, but should does not necessarily mean that they will. So, fingers are kind of crossed on that one. I love this new, uh, let me look this way. I love this new command pod here to the International Space Station Capella thing, whatever the heck it's called. It's really cool. This is only going to be a three-man space station because it's basically going to be here to oversee just transit between the surface of the MUN and uh, Kerbin. So, there's really no re reason to have much of a crew on this thing. It's going to be a bigger crew down on the surface, and uh, several ships will be docked at this thing at any given time. This one is probably going to spend most of its time out at the MUN. The RCS seems much better. The balance is much better. I've used up a lot of RCS doing this docking, though. Mechjeb wastes so much, but I just can't be bothered to dock. Look how much it is wasting. It's ridiculous. All right, we're coming into magnet range here in a second. Uh, let's hope and pray that these two will actually play nice together. Try to rotate a little 
better here. That looks straight enough. Good enough for government work. Alright, so it should pretty much just be up to the magnets. Oh, oh, I think I saw... No, I didn't see a wiggle. Come on. There we go. And they work. Look at that. Or do they work? Maybe they work. They work. That was a little scary. That thing was flopping around a lot. All right, so... Yeah, that looks like it's lined up good enough. This thing is about ready to go, I guess. So, what we're going to do next is just leave this thing again. Um, yeah, let's go. Can I switch back over to that just like that? Yes, I can. That's nice. Let's go deorbit this thing. Where do I even... Where is retrograde? I'll do this off screen because this is going to take a minute to turn this thing. All right, I believe this thing is ready to go. Um, this just consists of the two solar arrays, which are smaller because this is going to be a smaller station, and a worker drone. Now, I'm a little bit concerned with how this is actually going to clear. Um, the parts are kind of clipped into each other. I'm going to have to just like hope for the best pretty much when I do this. But uh, who knows? And I'm not sure how well balanced it is either, but this is a powerful rocket, so hopefully it'll be enough that it will overcome any weight imbalance with the... SAS and stuff. I did not put any uh, RCS down here because I figured um, this is going to be doing the docking, so I really don't need it. And it would just add extra weight and complexity that I don't need. So I skipped it. Now, um, there's a mech jib built into the command pod up there, so I didn't need one. But I do want to control from down here just because I'm not sure how center like if the things controlling from the pod that's off center or how that's going to affect things so I don't want to do that now we're just going to do the exact same launch as last time everything worked out pretty well with that so I'm I'm not going to you know tempt fate or anything so let's actually stop at stage two this time though gauge auto warp and looks like it's going to be smooth sailing so I will meet you at the rendezvous unless anything goes wrong. Well, that was not the smoothest of separations, but nothing got hurt, it seems. I'm just hoping that doesn't come crashing down. Nah, it's going up, so we're, we're good. Everything's fine. That was a little bit scary, but we're good. All right, well, we have arrived at the target, but unfortunately it's dark. Uh, we have a decent amount of electrical charge. Now, let's hope that this can't... Which one should I do? Well, first things first. God, I wish that that... The thing wasn't right there. Okay, let's go ahead and open the shield. Turn on the SAS so this stops. Oh, my God, the thing is going to shake itself apart. Uh... Fingers crossed. Decouple. Alright, it tumbled, but that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. Get the SAS going on that. Right, try to get this thing under con Not this. Try to get this under control here a little bit. Um, there we go. So, let's control from here. And set our first target and I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of this and I'll be back in a second well, this thing is speedy I like it even just with the RCS the uh, RCS balancer actually seems to work really well on this thing too except for right now are we not closing in any further oh it's trying to get lined up better I think I guess that's what I hope it's doing Good to go now. Yeah, there we go. Now look at it. look how fast this thing goes just from that little puff. Just poof. Now hopefully that tug isn't going to drift too far away because I had to actually use the RCS on this thing a little bit to steady the ship while we were approaching. It was it was a little bit annoying. 
I should have put a tank of RCS on it, but I didn't. Now why did this thing just start drifting like that? Nobody touched it. I don't even mind using time warp in that case. I kind of wish I'd put docking ports on that instead. Instead of decouplers, because I'm a little worried what's going to happen when I decouple this, but... Alright, we should have contact here in a second, and... Magnets are go, there we go, it's all good. Alright, so now we can probably just ever so carefully turn off the SAS, so the wobble stops and okay that was much nicer that was a much friendlier decoupling so put our RCS on set that as the target control from there I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a puff to get away all right this looks pretty good And I should be able to just turn the uh, docking back on. I'm just going to put this one right on this one, and I think we'll be in pretty good shape here. And this makes construction easy. I like this little tug. Of course, it's going to be kind of massive. It's not like super massive, but it's going to be kind of massive because of these two solar panel arrays. I really wish that would stop rotating. There's no reason for it. It's just being difficult and horrible. And I don't care for it. Are we going to start backing up here? Let's turn off the smart translation because that seems to... You know, that's still messed up. Um, It's the wobble. It is the wobble. Come on, get closer. Do that. Get the wobble under. You're making it wobble worse, you idiot. How far did that tug get away? The tug is getting closer, I think. That's a little bit worrying. Come on, back up. We're closing in now, aren't we? Ever so slowly. Come on. got this this time we got this and touch there we go so we can decouple let's go ahead and switch back to this now can I see the port that I need no I can't so Let's just nudge our little way out of here a little bit here if we can. What is going on? This thing is being difficult. Let's turn off the smart translation because that is not being smart. All right, we got a we got a death spin. There we go, death spin under control. Now I just need to flip over. Please, there we go. I really didn't need to flip over, I suppose, but for some reason it's easier for me to do it if I am going the right way. Even though we're in space, and it really doesn't matter. Is that a docking port? So what I need to do is find the docking port that I need. So at this point, I ran a couple of supply missions up here, basically just to refuel and drop off a new version of this... Uh, worker that you can't really see very good right there but it is a new version that will actually uh, work a little better I hope let's turn on these lights uh, basically I just added more RCS ports to it kind of gives better handling characteristics now we are going to send up the next module but before I do that let's just straighten out the space station relative to the equator we'll call that good yeah we'll call that good I wish I had set up action groups with this because I keep accidentally hitting the space bar and screwing up my uh, my station's orbit. It's a, it's a shame. So I've designed the next module off screen again. 
Um, it's just kind of a, a core module. It's going to go right under that one. So it's kind of heavier, so I put a bigger rocket underneath of it. I'm hoping it'll have more than enough juice with these solid rocket boosters to get a good start. Um, basically, it's got some docking ports where fuel tanks are going to go. It's got the SAS, some batteries, uh, the remote control unit and remote command units for the station. So, I mean, it's not that heavy. This is probably a bigger rocket that I need. But I've kind of been running low on fuel by the time I get up, and I wanted to put more, uh, a better maneuvering section here on this so we could ditch the orange tank and not have quite so much weight when we're doing the docking. And I also put a nose cone on here just because it makes it more rockety, and I think it'll be cool when we eject that. Because I, I haven't really dealt with the fairing factory. I have a lot of mods installed, and every time I add any parts, uh, it just kind of adds more memory issues into the game. Which it sounds like are never really going to be fixed, unfortunately, because apparently they are not going to ever get a 64-bit version of this game going because it would be too much work. Which I'm kind of sad about, because that would make a pretty big difference. But, it's not to be. Alright, let's launch into the plane of the target. Let this do whatever it does. I've been getting better at using MechJeb appropriately to do these launch into orbit things, so this shouldn't be too bad of a rendezvous. I'm going to uh, show the little beginning of the launch because this is a new launch device that I'm using, a new launch system. So if, if everything works, we'll probably just skip most of it. But we'll see. And... Oh god, it didn't. I didn't engage the autopilot. Oopsies! I had been getting better at that. Alright, well, that's more like it. Okay, we hit our terminal velocity, so the engine got thrusted down a little bit, which is something I like to see, because I know that I mean, the solid rocket boosters are doing their work. This is, how many lights are on this thing? I haven't seen this out here yet. Not that many! I think the other lights are on the bottom section shining up, so those are mainly meant to light up the fuel tanks. Alright, good. My timing was right on that. I was a little concerned that these fuel tanks... I put it on the last uh, ones that they're going to drop so that these solid rocket boosters wouldn't cause a problem, but I was a little unsure still on the timing of that, whether it would work, but it did. Cool. That worked out pretty nice. Alright, so we are here. What I think I'm going to do to make this a little bit simpler is we're going to undock the tugboat and just kind of move it out of the way for now. Then I can use the other ship to come in here and dock that component on and then uh, redock the tug in a second here. So. It's nice and easy get away from the station here. It's probably enough movement here. Let's just try and scooch it over this way as well. I don't want to give it too much speed because I have to, you know, go through everything to redock it again too. So let's go ahead and grab the station and whoa, this thing turns like crazy. Doesn't have a lot of mass right now, I guess. I'll call that good. And we're on the wrong side, unfortunately. It's going to be easier to turn that thing around than it is to have me turn. Let's do that. Right, set target. Control from here. And I am going to try to get this lined up in a reasonable fashion. I have... There's like these little handle grabber thingies on these and they're supposed to be aligned with each other pretty much is how I'm going to tell if it's aligned correctly. Is this even moving any closer? It's trying to like side... I don't know what it's trying to do. Yeah, we're getting closer. Alright, so we docked up the middle module there, redocked the tugboat. Uh, this is all ready to go. I'm hoping that that will be fine for when it's actually in transit. I'm going to fold up the solar panels, of course, and stuff before we go. 
but uh, this this core section of the space station is ready to go. There's still going to be four fuel tanks to launch, and like one or two more modules down there. But we're in pretty good shape for getting this thing going. So I think in the next episode we'll actually transit out to the moon. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, guys.